welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Although, one of my subscribers has a slightly different opinion. Here's Dustin with his version of my intro. When will she be YouTube famous? I know. When all the rest of the world wisens up. Right. So, continue watching Boy of Beauty. Love you, and Hugs from New Orleans. Thank you for that, Dustin. Hugs and kisses back to New Orleans. Now, today's film, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description, is about the Revolution Rainbow Palette. Bizarrely, part of the Halloween range. I don't, I don't know. I have, pff, the logic escapes me. I, I, th I, I think Revolution need an intervention. They get the Union flag wrong, they misspell Tombstone and they think rainbows are Halloween. I live. Do you need help? <laughs> but, if you want to see just how well, or not, this palette performs, then you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I really wasn't going to buy this palette. I really wasn't. And then I watched Teresa is Dead. If you don't watch her, guys, you really should. She has a little bit of a potty mouth, so God kids... If you watch, do not repeat a single word she says in front of your parents. Otherwise, Auntie Angie would be for the high jump. But I wasn't going to get it because it's so similar to the Jeffrey Jawbreaker and his Morphe one. But then she swatched that silver called Liberty and a duochrome called Heavenly. There's the duochrome. Lovely. Look at that. That's what sold me on it. That's silver. And look, I've still got a silver on my finger. See? Just look, look at the reflect. Just, just, oh my good lord. The re I saw that. It was an insomniac moment. And uh, I caved and I ordered at about half two in the morning. Seems that my low buy is scuppered as much by my pain levels as it is by Brexit. Um, I am struggling a bit extra at the moment, by the way, um, as well as my arthritis through my spine and my hip, my sciatica, my fibromyalgia. I'm also suffering from side effects of a medication combined with an allergic reaction to a plant in my mother-in-law's drive. I've got a bout of cellulitis on my leg, which I'm currently having very strong antibiotics for. The problem is, as it, as it dries the cellulitis up, it causes my skin to go very, very tight. And it feels like the worst sunburn gravel rash being attacked with a cheese grater poured gasoline on and set fire to uh, and unfortunately it's on the calf that is the worst affected by fibro which always feels like burning pins and needles anyway so I think since Sunday and it's now Friday I think in total according to my Fitbit 
I've had a total of two hours sleep. Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Two hours sleep out of the five days. It's appropriate, it's spoopy season because officially I feel like a zombie. So I apologise if I yawn through this. I have got an energetic drink. I'm hoping it'll get me through. Um, but, yeah. It may also mean that I'm a little bit slower than usual at blending. And, and I'm not that quick at blending anyway, because of my pain levels. Um, there's a speed widget up there. Feel free to speed me up. Uh, my, my films are all aimed at all skill levels, from beginners right the way through to experts. Um, so they, they tend to be longer anyway because I go into more detail. I really don't mind if you speed me up. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to do my usual. I'm going to talk you through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes before I start putting colours on. So if you've watched enough of mine that you know what I'm going to say, just skip forward until you see this brush come up with a colour on it other than the pink that it's currently stained with. Okay, awesome. Right, face is wash, moisturise, SPF'd and primed. Let's get you zoomed in. I'm using my usual antiperspirant primer and today I'm actually combining it with this W7 Princess Potion which is basically their version of the um, Unicorn drop things. Smells like candy. Actually really quite moisturising. What did it say on the back of here? Uh, complexion booster and primer. Radiant complexion. Perfect base. Hyaluronic acid, rosehip oil, sweet almond oil, aloe, argan oil, grape leaf and chamomile. So it's got lots of good stuff in it basically. I don't know if it actually works but Smells nice, makes me feel better. It, it happened, okay. Now, uh, on my eyes, I have got my usual Chrome and Pebble primer in shade Cotton. And for those of you who are long term viewers, this is the new pot. I finished the old pot. Uh, I have got a discount code for that, it's in the description box, uh, along with all the others. Right. Hooded eyes and deep set eyes. I have deep set eyes, but for a long time I thought they were hooded because I get the same issues. I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto my upper lid, not just through my socket line. And even when I'm using glitter glue, I'll get a bare patch right through the crease there when I'm using glitters. You can follow any tutorial, even with hooded or deep set eyes. You just need to know the trick. But in order to know the trick, you have to know which type of eye you have. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded eyes. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line, all or part of your mobile lid, that you have a hooded lid, full or a half hooded, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now I've got deep set eyes, if I cover, because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can do this and still make sure I'm A in screen and B in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close that eye, you can see I've got as much space again, it disappears back away. And if I cover the visible static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got a patch of lid there that tucks back away and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives you the same issue as hooded lids. So, how do we fix this? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a flat top brush, um, or a pencil brush, and just sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously it's going to reduce the space from your new crease in your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial, and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, I tend to, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I tend to leave a gap between the colour and my brow. Um, you may find if you move your crease up, you may have to go right up to your brow in order to get a decent blend of colour. If you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do is every so often when we're blending through the crease is stop, 
relax our brows and just check we've come up high enough that you can see it when our eyes are open like that. So, two very different ways of dealing with a very similar problem. I'm going to shut up now and start put well, I'm not going to shut up because I'm going to be talking to you still, but I'm now going to start putting some colours on. So, this is a Boozy Shop tapered blending brush. And I'm going to start off by going into Rainbow, which is an acid green. So for those of you who've been speeding me up, time to stop and listen. Right, what I love about this Chrome Pebble Primer is that it's not sticky when it goes on, so you haven't got to set it with any sort of translucent powders first. So you get full colour impact straight away. But you can blend straight away. You don't have to pat the colour on and then blend out. Um, they do six different shades at the moment. White is the lightest. They do a deep chocolate brown and a black at the darkest end. And then they have three skin tone shades in between. So you should be able to find one that works for you. Um, since I picked that, I got a sample pot which basically is it's the same size as the full pot, it's just only half filled. Um, this colour has actually built up really quickly, I'm really surprised for a neon how quickly that's built up. Um, you can see I'm doing circular movements coming in towards the nose this way and then reversing the direction when I come back out and I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on my eyes as possible. And do the same on the other eye while I continue talking. Um, yeah, I got a sample pop to start with because I bought some of their um, pastel loose pigments in the summer and I uh, did a tutorial with those. So I thought, right, if I'm using loose pigments rather than use my MAC Soft Ochre because they were pastels, I wanted a white base because the MAC Soft Ochre on me is very yellow based, you know, very yellow toned. Um, but it works better than the painterly one does, which is the pink toned one. But because I was using pastels with theirs, I wanted to make sure I was using a white base to give the colours as much power as possible. So I got a sample pot of theirs. Not really expecting much for it, to be honest. But I have not used any other primer on my eyes ever since. It's the only one I've used. I've used it with loose shadows, mattes, pressed shadows, shimmers, glitters, um, foiled shadows, high end, low end, everything in between. And it's by far the best eyeshadow primer I have ever used. And in fact, now I've started this pot. I am very tempted to go and buy my replacement pot straight away, even though I've only just started it. Look, I'm so I'm amazed at how well that has actually built up so quickly. You don't normally get that with a neon. Wow. Um, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm just going to wipe the brush off on. I actually prefer this than using a colour switch like I used to. It's much more gentle on the bristles. Um, Especially if you're using a, a natural hair. This isn't, this is a synthetic. But if you are using a natural hair brush, you can see it's taken all of that neon back off for me. Right, I'm going to go into Sunrise, which is a beautiful yellow. Because it's an awfully overcast day. And I want to see if I can persuade the sun to come out a little bit. Although it is spoopy season. But even though it's October, it doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of brightness out there, please. The nights are drawing in, which I love. There's nothing nicer when you're all caught up with your films, which sadly I'm not because, you know, lack of sleep. It uh, means I'm not. Whereas before I could normally get two films done in one day, I'm struggling even to get one done in a day now. And then I still have to edit them and export them and get them uploaded and do all the tags and everything. Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of... Normally I'm about a 
two or three weeks in advance of all of my films and collabs and stuff that I've got going up but at the moment I'm really playing catch up because the film that I did before this one I've got to edit and upload for tomorrow. That yellow is lovely and it's blended really nicely with that green. I've got a bit of fall out there but that doesn't really bother me because I do my base afterwards anyway. This is a beautifully bright why didn't they release this in the spring? This is... I don't know why they waited for Halloween to bring this one out. Because it really is beautifully bright. I would have loved using some of those during the summer. Mind you, to be honest, I do grungy looks in the summer and bright looks in the winter anyway. I just do whatever I feel like putting on in a day, to be honest. Got another couple of... Uh, palettes that I want to review for you but I think after I've filmed this one I've got to stop and go and edit the first film. If I've got time and if the daylight's still with me I might try and do a third film today but to be honest I think I'll be pushing my luck a little bit if I tried that. That has blended on so nicely. I'm really shocked. I know I shouldn't be shocked but I'm really shocked. Um, thank you for persuading me to buy it, Teresa. I absolutely love that woman. She is funny as she really is. Um, as I said, she does use the F word as a comma. So if my god kids are going to go and watch, do not repeat any other language. Um, But I just, some of the stories, some of the people that she encounters on her morning commute, just, it has me roaring, literally roaring with laughter. It genuinely does. Um, well, I'm going to grab this Morphe brush. This is an M321. And I'm going to go into Atmosphere, which is a gorgeous, grungy, olivey green. Look at that. And I'm going to run that through the crease. Obviously, if you've moved your crease up, now's the time to follow that, rather than your actual socket line. And then I'm going to do... I do apologise if you heard that, but I had no idea it was coming. I'm just going to give that a nice blend. Okay, this one's not blending as well as the previous two. I might try a different brush. Maybe it's not liking that brush. Let me grab... This is one of my um, AliExpress brushes that I recommended. This is tapered brush number six. Let's see if... Uh, it performs better with this one. Sometimes if you've got a, a, a shadow that won't blend very well, it can be as simple as trying a different brush with it. Yeah, that's actually working better, I think. I do struggle on this corner sometimes though, because I do have um, a very dry patch just here and also here on both eyes, which can affect the shadows. Because it seems to be blending fine this side, it's only once it gets out to here I'm really having a problem. So if you find that you get that, get the X, get the shadow blended out how you want and then add some pigment back on the brush and just pat it into place rather than doing circular movements. Just pat it in to help build the colour up on that outer edge. Okay, this, this green I'm actually really disappointed with. I'm not very happy with it at all. So, let's see how it performs on this eye, this side. I was going to just do these three colours, but I think I'm going to have to go in with the deeper one now to try and hide just how patchy it is on this area here. Greens are one of the most difficult colours to create, though. Green, blue and purple. 
um, which is why if they're in a palette you'll normally find me using at least one of those shades. Yeah, this is a real shame that this this is actually one of my favourite shades in the palette when I'm looking at it. It's such a shame that it's not performing too well. I wonder how it would react if I got a natural fibre brush on it. Because so far I've just used synthetics. So let's clean that brush off. Grab my wadge of Jeffrey brushes. JS6. Let's see whether it will work any better with a natural fibre brush. Hmm, maybe a little bit. Okay, so it seems that this one wants to have a natural brush to apply it. Which is frustrating because I know a lot of vegans and stuff don't like using and cruelty free people don't like using natural hair brushes. Um, if it's goat's hair it's fine because um, if you've ever been to a goat sanctuary and you've seen them bouncing around the field, you'll see clumps of fur all over the place. Um, they shed fur like nobody's business. So, <laughs> um, I don't mind goat's hair brushes because you know, I just, I know how easy it is to collect goat's hair without even having to have the goat in the same field as you. Just tidy up that fallout a bit. Right, I'm going to grab, this is the Morphe M562. And I'm going to go into, I'm going to risk it for a biscuit and I'm going to go into the purple. Seeing as how the green didn't go too well, this could be. It is lost, darling. And I'm just going to waggle this through just the first half of my crease. And just very gently buff the edge out. It's starting to look a little bit like a bruise. Mind you, did I expect yellow, green, and purple? Really? Again, not the greatest of shades. It's really disappointing because the first two shades had me so excited, and these two less so. But as always, you always get a hundred percent honesty from me. Because I would hate for you to go and spend your money on a palette that wasn't worth it. Because I've been taken in like that with uh, biased booty gurus. Not that I'm a booty guru, far from it. I'm just a girl who likes playing with makeup. chatting away quite a bit. I mean this is building up a little bit but it's still not great and it's not it's not I've used worse purples put it that way. I've used purples that are worse than this that are more expensive. Um, I might actually dip into Imagine, which is the pink. Just see if I can pop 
dots and all that just on the outside corner just to help the purple blend out a little bit better yeah, I mean can you see how patchy this is going right I don't like this I'm gonna go back I'm gonna take this off go back to the point where I had the yellow and the first lime green on um, and then we'll, I'll come back and we'll do uh, a different colour scheme because I'm really not happy with how these two colours are blending. Back in a minute. I'm back at the point when it all went tits up. So I'm going to continue using the original brush, the uh, Boozy Shop type of blending brush. And I am going to go into Wavelength, which is a really lovely bright sort of pumpkin orange. And I'm actually going to use this to go through the crease with. That's better, see? Instant pigment. So disappointed with that purple and that green. Two of my favourite shades in the palette and they're just bloody awful. Which is weird because Revolution can do good greens and good purples because I've got palettes of theirs that have got good green and good purples in them. So I don't quite understand why on this occasion the formula just fell down so badly. But anyway, pop a bit of orange on instead. I feel like a candy corn. Same thing through this eye. No windscreen wiper. And just blend all the way along, buffing the edge out just a little bit more. I'm going to sit back and make sure I've got the same shape both sides. Because obviously I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop my results. What you see is what you get. There's quite a lot of fallout from this orange. More so than the previous two shades. So it's just as well I do my base after I've done my eyes. Okay. Clean the brush off. And then you know I'm going into that silver. Right. You knew I was going into that one, yeah. Did you have any doubt at all? Especially after you'd seen the swatch. I mean, come on. I'll go back in and put in your brush for goodness sake. Thank you. Like this. I know it looks at this end like a Jeffrey brush, but then you get to this end and it's green. It's an AliExpress set. So I'm going to go into Liberty. And I'm actually going to try initially applying it dry. Just to see how it goes. I like to do this with a new palette because I like to see the opacity that the shimmer shades have and whether you can use them dry. Which, yes, it appears that you absolutely can. This is quite a soft shimmer, so be careful when you're going into the pan. Uh, I do need to just 
stretch this lid out though because where it got pulled around when I was five years old I've got super super deep creasing just here and if I don't do this when I'm putting shimmers on the uh, pigment builds up loosely in the deep crease and then throughout the day it will start flaking down my face which is not the effect I'm looking for today um, I think I'm also going to go into Daydream, which is another of the shimmer pigments. This one's very, I mean this is getting hard pan the minute you touch it, but you can still, it appears, get pigment up. And again I'm just going to pop this on dry, just because obviously the silver is a, a cool toned colour. And the orange is very warm. So I just want this kind of rose gold shimmer just to blend the two shades together. Yeah, so although this is, if I show you, I don't know if you can see, it's, it's hard panning straight away. But you can if you dig with the brush. You can actually scuff up the top surface so you've got loose pigment you can then pick up with the bristles of your brush. It's not ideal, um, but it, it works basically. So, same thing this eye, just the rose gold shimmer as a bridge between the warm orange and the cool silver. Right, I like that. Okay, I'm going to pause you one more time and I'm going to pop some um, foundation and everything on and some brows and whatnot and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. So, uh, you won't notice anything at all because you're going to see me straight away but I'll see you the next time I press the record button. Okay, I am back. I'm actually using a Colourpop um, it's actually a gel eyeliner that I'm using to colour my brows today. This is shade Teaspoon and it's a lovely green If I can't get the green shadow to work, I'm going to have green brows instead. Um, I have very, very sensitive watery eyes anyway, uh, and that's before fibro, which makes them worse, um, which is why I can't really use any liners on my waterline. I can do it for the sake of photos, but then I have to take it straight off, otherwise it will just wreck my makeup because my eyes will just stream throughout the day. But I'm going to grab this flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into I'm going to go into that purple magical. Because this time all I'm doing is kind of stamping it up under the lower lash line which I think is going to be the only real way I'm going to be able to use this shade unless I go for an editorial look without any blending or I'm just applying the colour in blocks but it is a pretty purple and I wanted to use it I know I always flinch with this eye because where I'm blinding it I haven't got any peripheral vision so I'm relying very much on a viewfinder quite a long way off when you haven't got your contact lens in in this eye obviously not this one okay and then I'm going to grab a brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette 
which looks like this. It's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes and buffing colours out. And I'm going to go into this tealy turquoise shade called Pegasus. I'm just going to buff that along that purple to soften the lash line and add a little bit more colour because it's a colourful palette, so why not use as many as you can? There aren't really any colours in here. I mean, there's Fantasy, which is just a, a matte white. But there aren't really any colours in here that I could use as a highlighter. But I did grab one of the... Uh, Halloween highlighters um, that Revolution had got, which I will use now. Right, this is, believe it or not, a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago. <laughs> and this, look at this, it's squidgy, look. Squidgy like an eyeball. Love it. Uh, they've got three colours. They've got this one, which funnily enough, is a pink toned highlighter. They have a white one, which is a white toned highlighter, and a green one, which is a gold toned highlighter. It's got some really nice patterning on the actual thing itself, and a not bad mirror. So, I'm going to grab some of this and pop it up just under the tail of my brow, just to give bit of a lift there. I love this because it really, you'd be surprised if you've never done um, a lighter shade under the tail of your brow. You don't have to use this, you could use that matte white if you didn't want to put shimmer there. Um, but you'd be amazed at how it sort of lifts the overall eye look. It's great if you're a <clears throat> wrong side of 40 like I am it really helps give a youthful, you know, high brow look because believe it or not your brows are one of the things that actually get lower as you get older. I've got much less lid space than I used to have. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more of this highlighter over my face, put some mascara on choose a suitable lippy and I'll be back with my final first impression thoughts. So I'll see you right now. Alright, I am back. Obviously I went in with the same highlight. Now I know Teresa when she used both the white and the green or the gold version of this said that it was very very powdery and just looked like a, like a white streak on her face. And she had to do an awful lot of buffing and blending it in and then she lost the shine and had to reapply. This is literally just one coat. So it seems that if you're going to get any of them, the pink one could be the way to go. Obviously, if you've got more melanin in your skin, I don't know how ashy this is going to be for you. Lipstick wise, I went in with a couple of the Jeffrey Morphe ones with his... Now, allegedly... These are his original lipstick formula. This is Mannequin. I've got Mannequin. And if this is the same formula, then it's changed from when I first bought it. Because I had to finesse it to keep it opaque with the one layer. Um, once it was opaque and dry, I went over the top with Star Crown Gloss, which I think is quite nice actually. It's quite a nice neutral finish, so it doesn't detract from the really pretty eye look. So what do I think so far of this particular palette? Um, I loved this neon and this yellow. The orange, also great. This green and this purple, really, really disappointed by. Neither one of them was, was going to build up or blend out very well. 
which is a real shame because people who know me know that I love my greens and my purple so I'm really disappointed by that. Obviously there's a lot of other colours in here, I'm going to have to continue using the palette off screen before I can give you a full is it worth buying or not. However, the shimmers that I have tried are amazing. That silver is actually the best silver I've tried, even comparing it to the silver in Jeffrey's Thirsty palette. And that silver in Jeffrey's Thirsty palette was about the only one of the shimmers that was actually any good. Um, I love the Duochrome up here. I didn't actually use it today. I went in with this rose gold one. Um, I'm going to continue using the palette off screen, and I will give. I will come back with it with another tutorial at some stage, um, and let you know whether it's worth it or not. But if you want it for that purple or that green, don't bother. If you're happy getting it knowing that the mattes are hit and miss but the shimmers seem great, then crack on. I mean it is only a tenner or I think it's 15 bucks in America. It is one of the ones in a tin. You do get a decent sized mirror in it so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, it would travel well being in a tin so uh, it's just up to you whether or not you're prepared to take the chance on which of the maps are okay and which ones aren't. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check that you are still subscribed because YouTube is still unsubscribing people. I gain a, you know, a sub and you can guarantee within hours I'll lose an older one. Um, it's really frustrating, it's very demoralising. Um, so please, even if I'm still appearing in your suggested watch list, you may not be subscribed, so just double check that for me please. Um, and again, double check that your notification bell is rung and you've ticked all the things that you have to tick, because apparently it's not good enough just to like a channel, you have to go and jump through flaming hoops for YouTube to actually send you notifications now. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I've got a lot of other films you can watch if you're not entirely sure whether having watched me on this one uh, you like my personality enough or my skills or my teaching style enough. Um, you know, go and, go and watch one where it's got a really good palette in it and then you can, uh, you can see the difference. But at least this does prove to you, you will always get 100% honesty from me always you will get 100% honesty from me. Uh, I would never tell you to buy something that I wouldn't spend my own money on. Or have spent my own money on. Uh, and if I've spent my money on it and think it's not worth it, I will tell you that as well. It would be lovely if you'd like to join us and hit the subscribe button. And again, jump through all the notification hoops that you need to, to get told every time I upload another one of these films. Right, it's quite enough for me for one day. I have got some editing to do. If the film that I did before this one is going to get uploaded in time for tomorrow. So all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.